iPhone Notch. It's literally just the shape of the display that Apple managed to turn into a feature of the iPhone, a topic of discussion, and a trend. Plus, they also made me make this video about it. But how could just the shape of the screen cause so many rumors before it got released and complaints after the initial launch? And then, how could everyone suddenly just be okay with it? What really happened with the iPhone cutout? Well, here is the complete history of the camera notch on our iPhones. It all began with the iPhone X, but we didn't know that it would be called it that way before Apple revealed it, so we assumed that it was just gonna be iPhone 8. Based on the rumors, we expected a regular iPhone with the home button, likely to be called iPhone 7S, and one with the brand new edge-to-edge -edge design to be called iPhone 8. Speculations started to emerge about the display shape, but one of the most convincing ones was the leaked picture of the SIM eject tool that clearly depicted the new design of the iPhone. One article published by Forbes, literally just two months before the iPhone X release, showed the mock-up of what's expected. And yes, the camera cutout is there, the notch is there, but the thing is that the software is trying to hide it. You can see in the pictures that the display area up top has a black background and wants to make you feel as if it's not there. So we all sort of knew what's gonna come, but we didn't expect Apple to embrace the notch to such a degree. Because this is exactly what happened. When Apple released the iPhone X, they didn't try to hide the cutout, they didn't make the iOS work in a way to make it invisible. I mean, yes, the wallpaper on the home screen was slightly darker towards the top of the screen to perhaps make it less apparent. Same thing with the next year's iPhone XS, which featured a completely black wallpaper around the notch to make it disappear on photos. But other than that, every app and everything you did clearly showed a notch in its full glory. You went to the settings, the background was white, so the whole screen, including the upper parts, was just white. It made the cutout really apparent. Was it an unusual sight? Yes. Did people complain? Yes. But as far as I've noticed, back in 2017, it was mostly the software developers that had these huge negative reactions. They started coming up with possible solutions to hide the notch showing how the UI could look if Apple didn't take advantage of those corners. How things could look in landscape. They tried to fix this problem. Some people called it, perhaps jokingly, that it's an agenda to resist and that people don't want it. It's got called odd and ugly and there were articles about the notch talking just about how ugly it really is. The reason I think that we thought it looked bad was that we'd only seen the rumors before the release and the renders and mockups are not of the highest quality. And they were not the real deal. Apple just makes it look a lot better than the rumors suggested. It's worth noting that the notch isn't the only way iPhone's display shape got called. It's also the camera cutout, top sensor bar, digital bezels, Heck, even bunny ears display is how you could name it. Actually, I've never heard this term from anyone else, it just popped up in my head when I first saw it, so yeah. The iPhone X was pretty successful in terms of sales, despite being the most expensive iPhone ever released until then. It got discontinued right the next year when the iPhone XS was introduced, but during the time it was available, 60 million units were sold. People knew what they were buying and the irregular cutout didn't really bother anyone. I'd say that the notch is like your own nose. You technically always see it and it's always in front of your eyes, but your brain just decides to ignore it. That's indeed how it turned out to be with the notch. Many reviewers concluded that yeah, the notch is there, but once you use the iPhone long enough, you forget about it. It's as if Apple knew that it wouldn't bother people. In 2022, even MacBooks have a notch for some reason, and yes, it looks kinda odd on the product pictures, 
and it seems kind of weird when you hear about it. But as far as the users are concerned, well, it doesn't look like people hate it or even love it. It's just there. But why? Why did the notch have to be there to begin with? Well, there was a trend for bigger and bigger devices. People just didn't want to use 4-inch screens anymore. This, combined with smaller and smaller bezels in competitors, created the challenge for Apple. An iPhone should be bigger with fewer bezels, but also remain recognizable. The home button on older iPhones did the job right. You knew it was an iPhone within seconds. But if Apple were to ditch the home button and get the new design, they just needed to stay true to their design language. They needed something to make the iPhone look distinct. And it seemed like the shape of the display was the way to go. Now, when you see just this, you just understand that yes, it's an iPhone. Samsung, probably the biggest competitor for Apple, created a bunch of ads making fun of them. They showed the man with the notch haircut, even an entire family with the notch on their hands. Now, think how iconic just the shape of the screen really is when someone's hair, styled in a certain way, immediately connects the dots in your head and you know that they have, quote, iPhone haircut. So I think that Apple did a really good job in the efforts of standing out. It was a bold move, for sure. Removing the home button when everyone is used to it is pretty bold, yeah. But so was removing the headphone jack, or more recently, not including headphones or even a power adapter in the packaging, or even removing a SIM card slot. So Apple's not really afraid of big moves. They don't fear change, they embrace it. iPhones are popular, and what's popular gets copied. After some time, other phones started having notch screens, and there were actually many of them. Google Pixel 3 had one, OnePlus started to implement it into their flagship, but as Oscar Wilde once said, imitation is the best form of flattery. And I think it applies here too. It just shows that for a while, everyone wanted to be cool and have a notch. It's not really the case anymore, since other major brands moved on from the cutout to a simple hole-punch camera on the front panel. So they have their own style now, so to speak. Also, Apple couldn't just have a single cutout for the camera in the display. Their Face ID is very secure due to 3D face recognition, and this simply wouldn't be possible to pull off using just one selfie camera. We mostly focus on the way the notch looks, but if you think about it, it's pretty impressive that they managed to fit so much into such small area. By the time we got to the iPhone XS, XR, 11 and 12, people got used to it. Nobody talked about it anymore. It was just an iPhone and this is what iPhone looks like now. But the iPhone 13 introduced a 25% smaller notch. And I think that I know why they did it. First of all, it's still a notch, so it stands out and everyone knows it's an iPhone. So yeah, this stays as it was. But more importantly, in the efforts to get rid of the notch completely, Apple needs to gradually go about it. They need to sell iPhones each year, so they have to gradually make some changes, even in the design department, to make people want to upgrade. That's the thing with the iPhone 13. The fact that the notch is a bit smaller, alongside some new features, may very well attract new customers. People who waited for the iPhone's notch to change will be happy about it. If Apple, however, removed the notch or jumped to the dynamic island in just one year, then there would be nothing left for them to improve in the next years. Fast forward 5 years from the iPhone X, we see the iPhone 14 Pro that finally leaves the notch design behind for a thing called the Dynamic Island. And this is the new notch, in the sense that it's easily recognizable to the public. I'd argue that Apple again managed to move closer to the all-screen design while standing out just enough to be known by everyone. Plus, the display shape or the pill cutout is also a feature now. 
I'd say that this is one of the most appealing features of the latest 14 Pro lineup. It's visually appealing and new, just as the original notch was, plus it's also useful now. One more interesting point is the new jailbreak tweak going around the internet. Basically, someone created the functionality for the old regular notch. It's naturally not as polished as the official Apple's Dynamic Island and no one will probably use it seriously, but it's at least interesting to see what could be possible and that a dynamic notch actually exists. Anyways, this was my take on Apple's notch design and their strategy. I'd really love if you shared some thoughts down below in the comments section. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one.